this is going to be the area that the operator is going to be using the most day in and day out. You can see that we've condensed the controls the operator is going to need to change on a well-to-well, day-to-day basis. We've got our wire feed controls right above, easily accessible to the operator, and then we've got our controls for the wire feed carriage and the longitudinal seamer here as well. On this end, the operator also has easy access to the hydraulic controls as well to the foot pedal for releasing the fingers of the seamer. Uh, today we're going to show you the Weld Plus Master Controller uh, and Aaron will be doing the instruction on how to utilize this particular control on the seamer. Okay, so we've got three main screens. The operation screen, the setup screen, and lastly a calibration. We'll start with the calibration screen. This is where we're going to enter the characteristics of the motor and gears. Uh, and this is just a one-time set and forget type of thing. The travel direction can also be controlled from this screen and that will set up your weld sequence in either an X or a Y direction. Back to the setup screen, we've got an uh, input box for travel start delay and crater fill duration. Um, pressing F1 and F2 on the bottom of the screen will toggle between those boxes and then in the bottom left you can turn the dial to increment or decrement those numbers. You also have the ability to tap on the box and manually enter a value that you want. Tapping again on the green arrow will deselect either of those boxes to give the encoder or the dial functionality to the box. On the left we have three parameters you can set for your weld sequence. Auto torch lift which needs to be enabled to, re to reach the other two parameters here. So with auto torch lift enabled we also have access to auto finger release and auto bed lift. I'll leave those two disabled for now. And over here we have the weld on off button which when turned off will allow you to do a dry run and when turned on will activate the torches at the start of your sequence. So I'll leave that off also. And then back to the first screen, operation mode. This is where we have the jogging abilities, forward and reverse. Um, and the speed of the jog is set based on the inches per minute number in this center box. That can be fine-tuned with the dial on the bottom left and course adjustments can be done with the plus 10, minus 10 buttons. A double tap on either of the jog buttons will send you into a rapid jog and a triple tap will send you into a homing sequence where it will take you all the way to one of the ends, depending on which direction you specified on the calibration screen. Do some runs. That, that covers the control, and we'll move on to the seamer. Good morning. We're taking a look at this longitudinal seam water that has a unique application as in it has a hydraulic bed lift on it. For this unit, we've got two different locations since it is a flat sheet seam welder and the sheet is going to be draped across on either end for the operator to be able to load parts from one side or the other. We have hydraulic boxes and controls on this end as well as on this end and then we've duplicated the controls for the 
airbags for clamping the fingers here as well as down here. To lower the bed into position to start your weld sequence after you've loaded your parts, you press the lower button. And at the end, we've got the option so that the unit will automatically lift the torch, release the fingers, as well as lift the bed to speed the process of loading and unloading. You have the ability to also manually raise the bed uh, from this box uh, if you have some fit up issues while loading your parts. The foot pedals control the clamping of the fingers that will hold the part into position as you're welding. There's two pedals on each side, one to control the back, one to control the front fingers, and they are variable pressure pedals. What that means is the longer we hold the foot pedal, the more pressure we're applying to the part. If we want, we can continue to apply more pressure by holding the foot pedal, or if we want to release, we simply tap the foot pedal. And that will release the fingers. On the carriage itself, you'll notice that we don't have any controls on the carriage. That's because while it's operating, if the operator needs to make any adjustments with the flat sheets being in the way they'd either have to build a catwalk or be traversing along the bed or on top of the material. So the carriage is relatively bare. You can see we've got our inverter motor, our gearbox, our ability to disengage and engage the, the rack and pinion so we can move the carriage quickly by hand. Our torch our cross seam adjustment, pneumatic torch drop and lift, wire feed motor, and wire spool, spool holder on the back. This unit also features cable track to manage the cables in the back, keep everything in a nice tight bundle, um, easing the wear on the cables themselves over time. Now we'll clamp the fingers. prepare for the welding sequence.